A beautiful country caught in a time of turmoil. Imagine your country going through a crippling economic crisis, on top of daily power outages, on top of suffering from an explosion that caused $15 billion in damages, killed over 200 people, and left 300,000 homeless. Imagine this happening during the COVID pandemic, along with political instability. Imagine that situation plaguing an otherwise incredible country full of incredible people. This is my journey through Beirut, Lebanon. Upon leaving the airport, Lebanon had already granted me access into their troubled presence. The city was pitch black due to the electricity crisis despite being enclosed by buildings. But for now, we are going to focus more on the incredible aspects of Lebanon. Good morning, travel lovers. It is day one here in Beirut. I am ready to go out and explore. First 10 seconds worth of context. It is a crazy time to be here in Lebanon, as you saw last night. They go through crazy power outages. There is a crazy economic crisis which is plaguing the country. And on top of all of that, there is an election tomorrow. So I'm gonna probably have to lay low for the next couple days, but today I'm gonna go out, explore as much as possible. I'm ready, let's go. Upon entering the city center, my own eyes witnessed the aftermath of the 2020 Beirut explosion. The explosion cost 15 billion US dollars in damages, left hundreds of thousands homeless, and hundreds lost their lives. Everything is just blasted out. I'm not sure if this is from the from the explosion from a couple of years ago or what's the case with this, but either way, all of these stalls empty, all the glass shattered, graffiti inside crazy state to be in then if you look up above everything's being reconstructed the great news this is an extremely famous mosque probably the most famous one maybe in all of lebanon they nickname it the blue mosque i'm not sure the official name but it is a very stunning place and then there's looks like a, a church just right beside it just down the street from the blue mosque we have this incredible street check out this architect absolutely amazing and the thing is though is i was just walking up and down the street for a couple minutes most of these are absolutely abandoned as you can probably see behind me absolutely nothing in it so i think what's happening is this probably used to be like a uh, designer street for kind of like first world shopping and then i think because of the economic crisis right now seems like everything has just been completely gutted so building over here doesn't have windows but the architect is still just first world I don't know if you can see those windows there none not at all in fact the 2020 Beirut explosion is to blame for this destruction as you see the immediate impact here this is the current state as Lebanon continues to rebuild Absolutely beautiful road here. We have some palm trees in the distance. Look at this beautiful church here. Strikingly gorgeous. And these houses on the other side here looks like something straight out of Beverly Hills or something. Actually, I've never been to Beverly Hills and I hear mixed uh, mixed reviews about it. So maybe maybe it's not like that, but man, it is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go check them out. Here's another example of the contrast here in Beirut. Completely stunning, 
palace-like building with beautiful flowers on the outside, a little bit of graffiti on the wall, nothing too serious. But once you get to the actual building itself, that glass is completely shattered. And when we get to the door, not in any better condition. Completely abandoned, but look how stunning it is. And not to end it there, look at that. And then just barbed wire and gates right on the roads. And then right in front of us, bam, completely modern, brand new skyscrapers. Downtown Beirut is a juxtaposition if there ever was one. You have beautiful European inspired architect beside blown out buildings. Inspiring murals mixed with angry street art. Military barricades and barbed wire mixed in with flowers overflowing onto the streets. And modern skyscrapers without electricity. The symbolism represents Lebanon perfectly. Suffering with hope. I took a quick little break from filming, but now this part cannot go unfilmed. In the back, the modern skyscrapers here you see the beautiful cliff and just in one moment this epic turquoise-ish water is going to pop out and we have these pinkish purpley flowers just to add into some more beauty what an epic view and then just over this little cliff It's as good as it could possibly ever be. And if you just keep walking along that path, nature has formed this incredible path for us to come discover its natural beauty. And in absolute Beirut fashion, you have the incredible sights over here, and then you have the contrast over here, right beside it is this cemetery of concrete blocks. I'm not sure what it's for, lots of graffiti. It just goes on and on and on. And looks like some people come here to have some graffiti fun. And right just above that is basically the city center, you can see the skyscrapers peeking up from the top. And I wish I had some information on this, but yet I just love the mystery and the randomness of just discovering it perfectly well, just like this. Oh, great discovery. Beirut has been continuously inhabited for around 5,000 years, making it one of the oldest cities in the world. As is the case with such cities, Beirut passed through many dynasties, the most noteworthy being the Phoenicians, Romans, Arabs, the Ottomans, and they were even under French mandate after World War I. Lebanon finally achieved independence in 1943, where Beirut achieved capital city status. A civil war plagued the country between 1975 to 1990. It's believed that over 60% of the country is either Sunni or Shia Muslim, while under 40% are Christians. On one end, a completely gutted apartment building with lots of holes on it. On the other side, extremely beautiful garden with beautiful buildings on the backdrop. This is quite interesting. This gas station's roof has just absolutely collapsed and is not in any hurry to be repaired and the pumps let's take a quick look obviously nothing going on in those and as always i want to show you guys around some 
residential areas just to get a better idea of the city. Lots of uh, buildings here, really close to my hostel. They have like tarps over the windows and these cats are just kind of everywhere. It's just kind of how it is here. But some of these buildings are quite, quite amazing to look at. Great segue into talking about the black market and the current economic crisis situation. In Lebanon, there are currently two economic systems. Number one is the official rate. So if you bring in one US dollar and exchange it officially at a bank, at an ATM, at an official exchange rate place, one US dollar will get you about 1,600 Lebanese lira. Now, if you take one USD to the black market, you can get 26,000 lira. That was the day that I arrived. Six days later, it's now 31,000 lira. So you're getting about 26 times the value on the black market opposed to the official rate. The whole situation is just absolutely crippling. I was talking to a local yesterday. He told me that in one day, the gas price jumped up 20% just in one day. Nobody can afford food because the lira is just so horrible right now. Even as I am making this video, there is a power outage here in the hostel, which is very common these days in Lebanon. They're just in so many crises right now. Day two in Lebanon, Beirut, and today I have to stay in the hostel for the entire day because today is the election day. And if you go back to 2019, the last election, I do believe that was the last one, uh, it got really chaotic, riots, craziness that I do not need to be part of. So I'm staying at the hostel for now, gonna go out for some food, but that's about it. I went out earlier. Pretty peaceful, nothing going on, but still nothing to play around with. It is 1 p.m. on Sunday, day of the election, and the first power outage of the day is here. It has nothing to do with the election, it's just, uh, just part of everyday life here in Lebanon these days. And if I want to use the toilet, this is the maze that I have to go through. This is a sad, sad reality. 6.30 and now we finally have electricity again. So after spending all day in the hostel, we decided to go out for a walk and we came across this garage souk is what they are calling it. And there's some pretty cool things here. And everyone that works here has been incredibly friendly because there's no one else here except for us because the election is going on right now. And uh, yeah, they're not trying to sell us anything. They're just, uh, they've just been so friendly with us. And it's been great to actually meet some local people. And the things here are super beautiful. Really cool experience here. And literally 10 seconds after I made that video, the power is out. Everything is pitch black. So time to go, I guess, and uh, try to get some food. There was a long line of military trucks that drove by for at least two minutes preparing to secure the city for the elections. I just filmed at the last second of it. And this is the party street on a Sunday night during an election. Only a few bars open, a few restaurants open, everything else absolutely pitch black. And this road I already showed you guys at the daytime, but right now it is nighttime and it is so hauntingly dark, yet so beautiful here. I can't believe, I believe that this used to be the luxury shopping district here in Lebanon just before the explosion happened. Could be wrong on that, but that's what it seems like to me. This is so eerie here. 
The election day was relatively calm to this point. I made my way back to the hostel where finally the elections erupted. There was constant gunfire around three kilometers away and reports of small explosions and military tanks being deployed. This was one of the very few times in my traveling career that I did not feel safe. I was relieved to learn that the next morning this was mostly a celebration, not violence. Whether that was true or not, that is what I chose to believe. Fast forward to my absolute last day here in Lebanon on my first day. I went back to the hostel to rest some, made friends with some other travelers at the hostel. So we just hung out at the hostel and just relaxed. So didn't really do much more exploring in Beirut, but uh, man, overall Beirut just absolutely blew my mind. I was not expecting anything like this. So I'm so grateful I had the opportunity to come check out Beirut. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, help me out. Really appreciate that. And uh, don't know where I'll see you guys next time, but uh, See you guys there.